Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today's presentation delving into the intricate realms of biological molecules. As the fundamental constituent of life, this molecule forms the basis of the complex dance that orchestrate the existence and function of all living organisms. Join me on this journey as we uncover the significance, diversity, and profound implications of biological molecules in shaping the tapestry of life. Biological molecules. Let's look into carbohydrates and organic compounds made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen atoms, primary source of energy for living organism, which is including human. Carbohydrate can be classified into different categories, monosaccharides and disaccharides. Monosaccharide is the simplest form of carbohydrate and cannot be broken down into smaller sugar and consists of single sugar molecule, and common monosaccharides include glucose, fructose, galactose, often refer as simple sugar. Do you realize when you eat something that related to carbohydrate like potatoes or rice, when you crunch it for a long period of time, you can feel that it tastes like sugar. Okay, that is indicate that the things that you are eating is actually consists of carbohydrate. Molecular. The molecular formula for carbohydrate is C6H12O6. Monosaccharides molecules are often in the form of rings made, made up of carbon atom and oxygen atom. Two different forms of glucose, alpha glucose and beta glucose. Monosaccharide can link together to form a disaccharide. If you can see, this diagram is indicate alpha glucose and this is beta glucose. And the two glucose molecules can link to produce maltose. And the bond that joins them together is called glycosidic bond. So, two monosaccharides react and glucose. Glycosidic bond form a molecule of water release. The reaction known as condensation reaction. Below is some of the examples that you can see is, for example, two glucose, glu two glucose that when they can link, they produce a maltose. Like glucose, glucose molecule link with galactose to produce lactose. And same thing, glucose that link together to produce sucrose. So the bond that join them together is called glycosidic bond. Okay, these are the example in terms of the chemistry. This is so called is glycosidic bond. The bond that join the two items together, they call it as glycosidic bond. So this is a sample of formation of maltose sucrose lactose by condensation reaction. This saccharide can be split apart into two monosaccharides by breaking the glycosidic bond. To do this, a molecule of water is added. So this is called a hydrolysis reaction. Remember, when they want to join, they call it as a condensation reaction. But then when this saccharide can be split into two monosaccharides, so this process is called hydro hydrolysis reaction. Breaking down of the disaccharide by hydrolysis reaction, you can see from this reaction, where you have two monosaccharides, when you uh, break, out, break down of disaccharide, so you can see it's actually, it's already, from, it's already linked with this uh, glycosidic bond. And then when they go through a process of hydrolysis, this has this molecule has been separated. 
function of monosaccharide and disaccharide mon disaccharide monosaccharide and disaccharide are essential sources of energy for living organism during the process of respiration the energy stored in the sugar is gradually released and used to synthesis adenosine triphosphate the energy current currency of cells and it will provide the necessary energy for various cellular functions and activity which enable organism to carry out process like growth movement and maintenance of their essential life function monosaccharide and disaccharide are soluble they are the form in which carbohydrates are transported through the bodies of organisms to supply energy and nutrients to various cells and tissue. So in animals, glucose, a monosaccharide and primary product of carbohydrate, digestion is transported, dissolved in the blood plasma. So this will allow for the efficient distribution of energy to different parts of the body. Meanwhile, in plants, the transportation of carbohydrate occurs primarily in a form of sucrose, a disaccharide composed of glucose and fructose, sucrose is transported through the plant's vascular system in a fluid called phloem set. And this transport system allows plants to move sugars produced in photosynthesizing leaf to other parts of the plant where energy or storage is needed such as root, flowers, or developing fruits. Let's look polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are a complex carbohydrate made up of long chain of monosaccharide units, which can contain hundreds or even thousands of sugar molecules linked together. So due to their large and complex structure, many polysaccharides are insoluble in water. In terms of the energy storage, so in animal and fungi, the storage polysaccharide is glycogen. So, which is made up from alpha glucose molecule that link together by, by glycosidic bond. Most glycosidic bonds are between carbon 1 and 1 glucose and carbon 4 on the net, so called 1 to 4 links. There are also 1 to 6 links which form branches in the chain. When that is needed, the glycosidic bond can be hydrolyzed by carbohydrates enzyme to form monosaccharide which can be used for respiration. This is a sample of a small part of glycogen molecule, one to six link. In plant, the storage polysaccharide is starch. Starch is a mixture of two substances, amylase and amylopectin. Amylase is linear change of alpha and glucose molecule that link together through one to form glycosidic bond. The linear structure allows it to coil into a spiral shape, making it compact molecule. The stability of spiral structure is maintained by hydrogen bond formed between specific hydrogen and oxygen atom in the glucose unit. Amylopectin composed alpha glucose molecule is different from amylose. So it is a branch molecule similar structure to glycogen, which is storage polysaccharide in animals. Amylopectin's branches allow for more rapid access to glucose unit when energy is needed. You can describe the topic of the section here. Structure of polysaccharide. Plant cell wall contain polysaccharide solubles. Like amylose, this is made of many glucose molecules that link by glycosidic bond between carbon 1 and carbon 4. In cellulose, glucose molecules are in better form. Adjacent glucose molecules in a chain are upside down. In one another, the chain stays straight rather than spiraling. Hydrogen bond form between different chains which cause change to associate into bundle called microfibrils. This is an example of alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bond. And this is a sample of cellulose molecule. 
where you have the hydrogen. The hydrogen is the glucose molecule in a change that occurs in the orientation. Look at the number of carbon atoms. Hydrogen bond hold the change together to form microfibrillum. If you can see, this is the chain that join them together. Microfibrillums are very strong. This makes cellulose an excellent material for plant cell wall because it will not break easily if the plant cell swell as it absorb water. They are very difficult to digest because few organisms have an enzyme, enzyme that can break beta one to form glycosidic bond. So test for carbohydrate. In terms of the features reducing sugar, the orange red precipitate form when bananic reagent is heated with a solution which is indicate the presence of reducing sugars such as glucose or maltose. The mass of precipitate of the intensified on the orange red color form after reacting a standard volume of an unknown solution with excess bananic re reagent and heating can provide qualitative information about the concentration of reducing sugar in the solution. A larger mass of precipitate or a more intense color often suggests a higher concentration of reducing sugar in the original solution. However, for precise quantitative measurement, additional methods or calibration could be necessary. And meanwhile, for tests for non-reducing sugar, this shall be done on solution known not contain reducing sugar, hydrolyzed by heating with dilute HCl, then neutralized with sodium hydrogen carbonate, then perform tests for reducing sugar. For the starch, we can just add iodine in potassium iodide solution, and it will turn the result a blue-black color, which indicate the presence of starch. That is a test for carbohydrate. Lipids. Lipids similar to carbohydrate. Lipid consists of carbon, hydrogen, and smaller portion of oxygen. Lipid include triglycerides and phospholipids. All lipids are soluble in water. So triglycerides molecule is made up of a broken bone of glycerol to which three fatty acids are attached by the bond. You can see this uh, triglyceride has three fatty acid with three ester, and this is the ester bond. This is how the formation of triglyceride molecule. In the event of um, the um, lipids, there is a combination of fatty fatty acid molecule, and this is where you have glycerol molecule. And this is where um, the water, H2O, each of the fatty acids is joined to the glycerol by ester bond. And the formation of the, this is a, the process of condensation reaction where you have uh, the molecule, the fatty acid molecule, and plus with the, uh, the formation of uh, ester bond where triglycerides molecule is made of a backbone of glycerol molecule to which three fatty acids are attached by the uh, ester bond. So these are the output, the process of condensation reaction. Formation of a triglycerides molecule, fatty acids are composed of long hydrocarbon chains with a carboxylic group, which is COOH, if you can see COOH, at one end. The hydrocarbon change consists of repeating CH2 unit. And each carbon atom form four bonds. The description of a spare bond attaching to the next carbon atom refer to the concept of ion saturation, where carbon carbon double bond, or in some cases triple bond, can be present in a fatty acid change. Double double carbon is called the unsaturated fatty acid. 
and the degree of unsaturation impact the physical properties of the fatty acid, such as melting point. Fatty acid without double bond are referred to as saturated fatty acid because they contain the maximum possible number of hydrogen atom bonded to the carbon chain. So the presence of the double bond influences the physical properties of this fatty acid, which is affecting characteristic like melting point and cleavage. So these are the, the diagram which indicate saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acid. The difference between two I already explained under the topic of formation of triglycerides molecule. Unsaturated lipids. Lipids containing unsaturated fatty acids are called unsaturated lipids. Plants lipids are often unsaturated lipids tend to have lower melting point and than saturated lipids. Under saturated lipids, lipids containing saturated fatty acids are called saturated lipids. And saturated lipids often in animals. Triglycerides. Triglycerides are used as energy storage compound in plant, animal, and fungi. Their insolubility in water helps to make them soluble for this function. They contain more energy per gram than polysaccharides, so can store more energy in less mass. In mammals, store of triglycerides often build up beneath the skin in a form of adipose tissue. The cells in adipose tissue contain oil droplets made up of triglycerides. Adipose tissue help to insulate body against heat loss. It is low density tissue which is increased buoyancy. These properties make it useful for aquatic mammals that live in cold water such as whale and sea. Adipose tissue form a protective layer around some of the body organs, example kidneys. In plants, triglycerides make, made up a major part of energy store in seed, either in cotyledon, example sunflower seed, or endosperm, castor bean. Phospholipids. Phospholipid molecule is like triglyceride, in which one of the fatty acid is replaced by phosphate group. And these are the diagram that shows phospholipids molecule, where you have two fatty acid change. And it's, it's linked up to the glycerol, and you have a phosphate group. As I already explained, phosphate lipid molecule is like triglyceride, in which one of the fatty acid is replaced with phosphate group. And fatty acid change create no electrical charge and not attract the, to the nipple of water molecule. This property are called hydrophobic. The phosphate group, which has an electrical charge and attracted the water molecule, is called hydrophobic. So these are the example of phospholipid. So phospholipid bilayer, if you can see in water, group of phospholipid molecule are uh, arranged itself into a bilayer. Okay, so you can see hydrophilic plate. Okay, these are the, all the plate, hydrophilic plate. So it got around like a plate, facing outward into the water, and hydrophobic tails facing inward, which is avoiding contact with water. Okay. That's all for today's biological molecule that I have for you. Hope they really understand about what is all about under the topic of biological molecule. Please don't forget to subscribe to Jones Standard YouTube channel. Hope to see you in the next presentation slide. Thank you very much.